Hello, today we're going to look in this video at a phenomenon called resonance. Um, this is where bodies shake themselves to bits and it's very important to engineers. I'm going to cover it because whilst it's not in the MEI, EdXL and AQA further maths um, syllabus, it's the next step on from damping and therefore those of you who've done physics where it is in the syllabus will want to know about this and how it fits, how the maths works. Here's a classic example. These photographs are a, a bridge called the Tacoma Straits Bridge, which ripped itself to bits in about 1940. So what was going on here? Well, you can see that the bridge is starting to distort. What happened? Well, the wind was blowing in from the sea that way, and the uh, deck of the bridge acted uh, like an aerofoil, and it started to vibrate up and down. It also started to rotate, as you can see here. It's leaning that way, then it's leaning that way, then it goes that way, and then it goes that way. And it carried on doing this till it ripped itself to bits. Um, what was happening then? Well, what we really had is a form of a uh, second order differential equation with the um, acceleration of the bridge. We had some damping from the bridge in the middle here, and we had some sort of spring-like effect from the bridge where it's trying to stop itself moving. But all this is being driven by a function um, over here that's our forcing function which is a sinusoid with its own frequency and the problem is what happens when the frequency of this forcing function gets close to the natural frequency of the bridge so let's have a look in here um, we know how to solve these sorts of equations um, second order diffs if we've got that now, I'm assuming here that I've got complex roots for the sort of problems we're going to deal with. That's going to be the truth of it. So I've got an ex in my complementary function, I've got an exponential decay um, component, and I've got a vibration component in natural frequency omega naught. Here we go. And I've got some form of forcing function here. Um, so my particular integral here I'd start off with the trial function P sine omega t. I'm going to try and avoid getting involved in sines and cosines today because it's going to just confuse matters. So you'll see I'm going to use complex numbers in a minute. So what happens here? Let's start off with the system um, where there's a no damping. So here I have simple harmonic motion. Um, I'm going to get a differential equation that looks like that if I've got this forcing function going up and down like that. Um, therefore, I get an auxiliary equ equation that looks like that. There's my force there. There's my auxiliary equation, and there are my solutions. They're entirely imaginary, so I'm just going to get a straightforward vibration. Okay, so what happens now? Well, I've got my particular integral. If I want to find that, I'm going to try and solve this equation to find the solution for that forcing function. Um, so what am I going to do? I'm going to try out, here's my trial function, x is p, some multiple of sine omega t, that's my velocity then. Um, second differential is going to be my acceleration. If I substitute these into the left-hand side of my um, equation, my differential equation, I get my, there's my acceleration term, and there's my slight forced um, spring term, and I'm going to equate it to that. Um, therefore, I can get rid of the sine omega t's, and I also get a bracket here, omega zero squared, that's the natural frequency of the system, minus omega squared, that's the force uh, frequency of the forcing function. Okay, so if I then sub that into my particular integral, I get one in this form here, and if I, in order to graph this, I'm going to take out the omega naught squared, so I've now got this factor out the front, and I'm going to non-dimensionalize my graph in a sec by taking my x and dividing it by that. So let's have a look, because this is the only bit that varies with angular uh, frequency, natural frequency, and that's what I'm going to graph in this direction here. Okay, so that's my direction, omega over omega naught. So what happens? Well, when omega equals zero, the bracket's one on the bottom. So I just start off with a magnitude of one when I get my non-dimensionalized value. Well, what happens as omega increases? Well, the value of this bracket decreases. 
So it gets dark, so my magnitude starts to increase. And of course, as omega gets closer and closer to omega naught, so this bracket and the denominator tends to zero, and therefore my solution tends to infinity when I get to natural frequency. What happens if I go to the other side? Well, it's no longer the magnitude, the um, bracket's no longer zero. As omega goes just above, I get a small um, negative value. So I nick this small value, then I'm um, going down again. And what happens as this goes on? Well, as omega increases, so the bracket, the omega of omega naught squared tends to infinity. So the bracket tends to infinity, and one over the bracket tends to zero. So what happens? My magnitude goes down to zero. But the worrying bit is what happens here, isn't it? My magnitude, my amplitude of my vibrations heading to infinity, and it effectively goes off to infinity until the structure actually breaks. So that's what happens if I've got no damping. Let's have a look and see what happens if I've got some damping here, when I've added a damper in, and therefore my differential equation's now got a damping term in, and my um, auxiliary equation now has a 2 lambda, that's going to be my damping coefficient, z in. And what am I, therefore, my roots going to be? Well, my roots going to be, um, for this, z equals minus lambda plus or minus omega 0 um, i, that's the imaginary part. So my solution is, therefore, um, got for this complex solution, well, I've got a decay term out the front and I've got an oscillation term here. Now, what happens when I set off and look at this and find the particular integral? OK, so is I'm now going to start working in complex numbers. So rather than writing sine omega t, I've put e omega i t because um, it makes my life a lot easier here. And my trial function is going to be x is some multiple of e to the i, um, omega i t. So my velocity is going to be that. My acceleration is going to be that. If I substitute those into the left-hand side of my equation, uh, p e to the omega i t is a factor, and I put the rest into a bracket. So I can now get rid of my e to the i omega t's, and I would find a, a value for p, and then I can put uh, rearrange my equation. Excuse me, just click on here to make that slightly flow a bit better. Here we are. That's a bit better. Now you can see it. OK, so my magnitude of my particular integral, so my particular integral is going to be the this um, forcing function here, effect, as my magnitude and e to the i omega t. On the denominator is my bracket. Here has become my denominator. And we can see here I've got a minus omega squared here. Um, I've got a 2 lambda omega i, so that's a complex term. Um, so imaginary term, and then I've got another real term. So I've got some reals and imaginary terms, which I can group together. Um, and here I've got an imaginary part. So if I want to find the magnitude, if, so I've got a complex number here, so that's got magnitude, but it's also got phase, it's got um, an argument. I'm going to ignore the argument, because all that is doing is phase lagging the result. So ignoring that, I'm just going to find the magnitude by effectively using Pythag, and we get this equation here. So let's have a look at that when I graph that. I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to move the omega squared omega zero, the natural frequency out the front of this. So I'm in the same position I, had, I was with the undamped position um, solution in that I've got this factor out the front and I'm going to non-dimensionalize my graph against it. But what have I got now inside? Well, I've got the term I had before, the omega over omega naught term coming up, but I've also got a lambda over omega naught term. Well, that's effectively my damping coefficient non-dimensionalized and um, what am I going to do with that well in this, my example here so so my answer solutions will vary with the size of this so for my graph here I'm going to use some light damping here it is so I've used lambda over omega naught equals 0 0.1 so I've got a pretty low um, damping going on here and what happens now well I get the same sort of shape don't I, I start off at one I go up to some peak, um, but this time when I get to the natural frequency omega equals omega naught, 
um, I get a finite value of the magnitude of my vibration and not an infinite value. If I increase my damping, what would happen? Well, I'd get less, a lower magnitude, yeah? So if I increased my lambda, made it higher, I'd get to there. So taking the magnitude of my vibration down. Um, so that probably tells us how to solve this problem, doesn't it? And that if we get into this sort of position, we need to increase the amount of damping. Um, if you look at some videos of the Millennium Bridge in London, that used to vibrate sideways when they first built it. So they stiffened it up sideways, therefore increasing the damping. In effect, they increased it, put, introduced some damping, and therefore they reduced the magnitude of the vibration. So that's what we're going to watch out for at resonance. In both cases, the magnitude increases when we get to the resonance when that, the omega gets um, to omega naught, um, and we solve it by uh, increasing the damping. So there we have it. There's our, my summary of it, of the system. Left-hand side here is the maths of it, and the right-hand side are the graphs. And if the system's not damped, um, the red line says that the magnitude goes off to infinity. If it is damped, it, it, it decreases the magnitude and avoids self-destruction of the system. So I hope that was of interest to you. Bye now.